And we're at our second episode. And the second take for the second episode. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, listeners. Uh, We know there are a few of you out there. Thank you so much for supporting this brand new podcast. I know you're small, we're beginning, but um, the hits that we've received, they actually blew our minds a little bit. Um, We weren't expecting to have so many listeners. So truly, um, thank you very much for the support so far. So early on, it really is. It's, It's honestly really appreciated. Okay, so we're going to start on something a little bit closer to home for myself. Um, For those of you who do follow me on um, social media, you'll know that my family and I went through something um, quite devastating um, over the weekend. I'll try and be a little bit brief about it. Um, There is a reason why I want to talk about it, and we will get to that, but I'll obviously just want to give you a bit of an overview of what happened. So... We experienced a home invasion, uh, whereby we had four, it was about five armed men came into our home and, um, you know, proceeded to ransack everything. Um, I was tied up. Um, thankfully my, my mom, um, my cousin and myself were not very badly hurt. Um, you know, I was, I, I, I was tied up. Thankfully the others weren't, but it was quite a, devastating experience uh, we're all in recovery at the moment you know we're seeing counselors and things um and to those who have given us support online i would just like to say thank you thank you very much i truly truly um, appreciate it so w- one of the reasons why i wanted to bring this up it has to do with technology and apple and icloud and find my iphone um what was incredible about this process or, or rather up- upon reflection after it happened is how I was immediately able to lock all of my devices thanks to um, my gardener's phone. I logged logged in and I was able to do whatever I needed to do. Um, After that, once all of the police and the medical, uh, the the people came over, um, we actually used my uh, account to track the devices that had been stolen. So bear in mind, they also took our vehicles. And so what we were able to do is fully track where these people were going, um, the routes that, that they were taking and, you know, where they were. Um, using this information, um, w- you know, in working in conjunction with the police and the flying squad, we were actually able to recover some of the devices, which in itself is incredible, as well as um, finding the location, address, and identification of one of the criminals. So it really just, it came in handy. Um, I never really realized how powerful a suite of tools um, that Apple offers to people who, you know, this might happen to. And in my case, being able to lock the devices and also having the option to erase them, as well as just to track them, was really something else and i think it's phenomenal fantastic and it should be the norm for all for all tech companies to do for their products especially when it comes to mobile phones yeah um the the thing with with online backups and security is still um one of the most hotly debated topics out there but it surprises me how useful it can be, especially in your situation, which was incredibly bad. And it's sad that you had to go through this yeah. to realize how useful technology like this can be. Um, and it's just a sad, sad thing to, to realize that. Look, I would imagine that not everyone's situation will be like ours. Mm. You know, like, I mean, we have in the past maybe have had um, someone's phone stolen and of course, you know, you try and track it and so on and so forth. This situation was a little bit more extreme in terms of it was a house invasion. People came in, ransacked, stole everything, including vehicles. But having this suite of security, I guess we could call it suite of security tools, Mm -hmm. right? At our disposal to possibly track these people, that to me is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know there are ways around that we're not going to talk about how because we'd rather people didn't know how to circumvent exactly. these kinds of things. Yeah. But at least if there's a point where these people who are doing it are less knowledgeable and they don't know, then it means that the victims in the in these scenarios actually can regain some power. Yeah. They're able to work with the police, work with the authorities and actually 
you know, recover some of the devices, which in a small way allows you to sort of move on from the event, mm. which is, which it's done for us. You know, small yeah, victories. Small always, victories. That's yeah. it. You know, we, one day at a time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am curious then, um, as we all know, there are rumors about the Apple tile coming or whatever. Um, do you think if you had those connected to other peripherals of yours, would it be easier to find? Or? That is actually a fascinating question. So we currently have tiles at the mm-hmm. moment, which I believe is built on a very similar concept, but not as advanced. And um, when Dionis' keys were stolen, um, we were actually able to pick them up for up to, it was almost, I think, a kilometer mm. from our location, which is impressive. Yeah, it depends on, you on know? the number of tiles in the area, isn't, doesn't it? So now that's the other thing. Uh, we're in South Africa. Mm. Tile is not as big here as it is abroad. Um, but just the fact that we were still able to pick it up, up to that distance before it seemingly lost connection mm. is impressive. You know, it means that like if you're in the mall or something, it's still useful, you know, Um, in terms of an Apple perspective, I do think that Apple's will be far more sophisticated. Plus the proliferation of Apple products is far wider than most other manufacturers, Mm. you know, including Huawei and Samsung, specifically in South Africa. So I would imagine more people would have it. And so possibly in several years from now, several months from now, whenever it's released, you know, after, after release, it will be very useful. I'd imagine. Yeah. Mm. No, it's... The, the, I think the sooner it comes out, the better. <laughs> right? Anything security-related at this point in time yeah. for myself feels that way. Gosh. <laughs> okay, let's segue into something a little bit more light-hearted, if you can call it that. Yeah. Um, some people have very strong opinions yeah. about what we're going to speak about next, which is... A teabagging yes, in, in tea video bagging. games. Yes, Anyone who's a gamer should know this. Just in case you don't, for those who aren't familiar with the term, it's whereby you're in a game of some kind, normally a competitive match, and once you've taken down an opponent, you do squats into their face. Yeah, pretty much. That's basically what you you crouch into their face, yeah. (laughs) Mash a bunch of C on someone's head. (laughs) All right, so the reason why we're speaking about this at the moment is because in our local South African esports industry, um, with regards to creators and um, professionals, the topic of teabagging and whether or not it should be prevalent in professional esports has been making the rounds and is being Mm. spoken about. It's been hotly debated. Yes, they're dividing opinions about it. (laughs) Some people look at it and say, it's just teabagging. What's the big deal? Mm. You know, whereas other people are saying, look, it's somewhat sexually suggestive, number one, and derogatory. We're now going to speak about it a little bit. (laughs) Honestly, um, my opinion is a little bit controversial. Many people think it's unprofessional, which is obviously true. Which is Um, actually my point of view, and I'll get to that just now. And then... Many other people think it's sexually suggestive, as Hans said. But but I am of the opinion that it actually doesn't make sense to think anything about it. I think it's as unprofessional as not shaking your opponent's hand after a tennis match. Um, and that's the extent of it. Um, you can do what you want when you want in a match. And you can be un- as unprofessional as you want to be. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're going to win or lose, it's all up to skill. So let's talk about the professional aspect for the moment, because Mm. from my opinion, I believe that this kind of teabagging shouldn't be in professional esports. Now, I I, I completely understand your perspective, whereby you don't really think it's it's anything, you know, especially from a sexual perspective, because Mm. I also don't see it as sexually explicit in any way. Yeah. Um, I do, however, feel that it is somewhat derogatory in in the sense of. Normally in the in the past, because a lot of people have been are familiar with this, especially if you're a gamer. If somebody does that to you, there's two ways to think about it. The first is how it's funny. Ooh, ha ha, I now, I dominated you, so I'm going to show you that I've dominated you by sitting on your face. Mm. Okay? Whereas the other side of the coin is, you know, expletive, 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 I own you, you're my bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, given how it has that connotation to it, I don't believe it's suited to professional esports. Because, you know, when you see 
players in in let's say normal sports mm-hmm. okay not esports but normal sports yeah. and and conversely i believe that esports should be treated in a very similar of way course, yeah whereby they have a lot of professionalism mm-hmm. you know people on the sports fields whether they win or lose will go up to each other and shake hands and say thank you for a match mm-hmm. regardless of how upset they are mm-hmm. of course there are some exceptions to the rule and those people who are the exceptions get penalized for it and rightfully so so from that perspective, I feel that teabagging shouldn't be allowed in the professional scene purely because it could mean like, oh, I own you, mm. but it shouldn't be. It should rather be, thank you for the match. Let's shake on it. And you go on your way. See, um, in the few esports scenes that I follow, um, it's mostly professional, especially in PUBG and, and the like. It's always a professional outcome, no matter who lost, who won. But I have seen a couple of people be all unprofessional about it um and just like in real sports it's it's exactly the same as in esports there will be the outlier person that is rude who who wants to be funny after he won Um, but now this is the thing this this is the question so in our opinions mm. should it be allowed in professional esports or shouldn't it to me it's not a question of if it should be allowed to me it's a question of or it's not a question, rather. It, it's more the fact of we shouldn't even th- be talking about it. There are much more <laughs> serious things to, to talk about in the esports scene Fair enough. than someone being a rude a-hole, in my opinion. Um, if it happens, it's up to the event organizers how they deal with how it. How they respond, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, which I think should be dealt with. As much as I don't care for it, I think that, yeah, as you said, maybe uh, someone could be penalized for it. They should learn. They should improve. They should better okay, themselves. Cool. Fair enough. So what basically what I'm taking from this is that um, we would prefer not literally not to see it, mm. but we but we sort of are on the same point of in a professional setting. It's probably better. not advised to do it. Yes, that's like you steer clear from it. Do it in a. I guess a fun setting if if you like if you're between your friends and, and, and all no, of you, it's a social setting and yeah. you don't really care much for it sure mm. but if you're in a professional setting perhaps it's best to steer clear yeah. from any kind of action in the game mm. with the exception of what the game's about I mean, if the game's about killing people you kind of have to steer clear from that yeah but what, <laughs> what i mean is you know if you've won the match to steer clear from something that could be construed yeah. as unprofessional impolite and so on and so yeah, forth just don't be rude but just from a professional setting now hey we're not mm-hmm. talking about any other... setting though uh, um, i guess just don't be an asshole don't be that guy you are listeners how do you feel about the situation if you have a comment by all means please do tweet at us yeah at Gettle podcast um, or at Hansapt or at Infinis. Infinis yeah. um, we are around. By all means, do let us know. And we can always, you know, broach the subject again at a future point in time. Of course. Okay, okay, okay. So, teabagging, we've sort of, we have differing opinions. <clears throat> um, so, let's move on to something we actually spoke about last week. Mm-hmm. And that has to do with the Galaxy Z Flip. Yes. And it's foldable glass, glass screen so you guys can't see me but i'm literally doing, doing the, the air quotes <laughs> so, so if you listen to last week's episode i actually asked whether it's gorilla glass or not and in the meantime we actually went out and did a bit of research more more people did their own research as correct, well correct um including youtuber jerry riggs everything Phenomenal channel. Yeah. Uh, highly recommended if you do enjoy watching people destroy things, which of course we all do. So. Of course. Um, <laughs> and in his video, we found out that the glass might not be as strong as Samsung makes it out to wah, be. Wah. Oopsie. <laughs> so, um, so to cut a long story short, without going into too much technicalities about it, um, Jerry Riggs Everything does a Mo's pick scale mm. where, you know, from zero to, I think it's 10 or 15. I think it's probably uh, 10, I think. I think it's 10. Um, and basically normal traditional glass will scratch at about six or seven. The Galaxy Z Flip scratches at two, which is basically plastic. Yeah. So although it might feel a little bit more like glass, it essentially is for all intents and purposes, a plastic screen. Yeah. Just as the previous flip phone. yes i couldn't remember so the um he did mention that there's a possible addition of silica 
to mm. the the components that create the screen, yeah. which is probably giving it that smooth glass like feel. Mm. But from a durability perspective, it's anything but glass. Yeah. And with that in mind, I think it is rather erroneous of Samsung mm. to be marketing it as such because it's not glass. Exactly. And and I'm thinking now, um, even if you you handle your Z Flip perfectly um, and you keep it in pristine quality sure. for two years. <laughs> Anyone with a phone knows that you drop it within the first 15 seconds of opening but, the but box. But even then, <laughs> just the act of opening and closing the two, well, the screen, it will scratch itself given a few months, Look, won't it? If plastic scratches it, if, if your keys in your pocket scratches it, if but it's it won't, But it won't be open. Why would you put it open in your but, pocket? But I mean, won't the screen scratch itself every time you open and close it? No, because there is a gap. Ah. And they did mention that possibly because it's meant to be glass, that Samsung put this gap there so mm-hmm. the glass doesn't touch glass. However, or the glass doesn't scratch its um, Excuse me, I mean plastic doesn't touch plastic <laughs> yeah. in this regard, because <laughs> that's effectively what it is. Now, mm. now, look, this is not to totally diss on Samsung. Now, um, I no. do, th- as I mentioned last week, I think it's fantastic mm. that this is where we are at at the moment. You know, technology is advancing. Foldable glass looks like it's going to become a reality, which mm. in itself is phenomenal yeah, that's don't get me wrong really I, mean, great I would love an all glass watch like including strap just like on my wrist I think that would be fantastic I would just love a know? round watch Apple <laughs> <laughs> the, the bigger issue though for me with this whole thing is how Samsung is saying it's glass where it's not really glass mm-hmm. and it actually has attributes that are closer to plastic yeah. so for me that's the big thing like, like honestly just tell people just be like yeah it's a plastic screen it, it's a strong plastic okay? screen yeah it's a strong plastic screen like I'd take that yeah, I'd rather have that than, than, than be told it's glass. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, something else about this phone is I'm surprised at how quickly Samsung managed to get it out. Mm. And the reason why I'm saying that is not from a tech perspective, but from a coronavirus perspective. Um, as we know, there are many companies who are beginning to delay um, their production schedule. And so that now leads me on to... The coronavirus and the most recent rumor. As you know, this is not a news podcast. Yeah, so we'll speak about everything and anything, okay? Anything that interests us. <laughs> so one of the newer, like, bigger things that's been on social media for the last week is how, allegedly, how the coronavirus has been bioengineered to make men, wait for it, infertile. Which is kind of... <laughs> Kind of a shock, uh, to the, say the this, least. This be some Resident Evil shit. Yeah, okay. pretty much. <laughs> it, it reminds me a lot of those memes that went around a few months ago uh, with the new company in Ch- in China. I'm not sure what the company's name, but they literally have the Umbrella, Umbrella. Corp logo. <laughs> well, look, look, there, there's some credence to the story in the sense of um, apparently there is some sort of a genetics lab, like mm-hmm. 200 meters from yeah, the market in right Wuhan. Right next to yeah, the market. Exactly, where the virus was allegedly, or rather the source of the virus yeah. comes from. Um, of course, it's, it's, it's just an interesting take mm. that... Could this have possibly been a genetically engineered yeah. disease? Like, like obviously nothing is confirmed and I don't think anything ever will be. The virus <laughs> itself came out and, uh, sorry, not the virus, the lab itself came out and, and told the public that, listen, we may have, may have worked with, with the virus, but we didn't experience any leaks. Uh, there wasn't any but breakages. That's how every exactly. sci-fi movie begins. <laughs> yeah. The, the guy that gets bitten obviously won't tell anyone yes. he's bitten. Um... <laughs> So, according to Quartz.com, um, well, QZ.com, it's Quartz, uh, the, the lab in question, they have a really hard time to actually get anything done now because people firmly believe the virus came from them. Um, oh, or at least the bioweapon was engineered, yeah. engineered by them. That's right, yeah. Um, but as, as we just said, of course, if, if you're the guilty one, you're not going to say you're the guilty one well obviously not and it's just an interesting take whether it's real or not it's quite an intrigue don't worry there'll be some netflix documentary in about 15 years yeah not not even 15 <laughs> give it give it two years um yeah so regarding the spread of the virus and from where it comes from mm. apparently it was from a market in wuhan which had yeah. a lot of interesting and unique animals mm. On that topic, I, there is something I just discovered this week, and I really want to talk about it. Uh-huh. And it has to do with the sperm whale. Mm-hmm. I know this is a really weird segue, but like I feel I have to share this because I thought it was absolutely fascinating. Why did you discover this? <laughs> <few times? laughs> so these huge mammals are 
passive, right? Mm-hmm. They don't hurt anyone. Um, and, you know, there haven't been any incidents with them. You know, they're, they're, they're mammals, they eat plankton, so on and so forth. And they're deep in the oceans where no one can bother them? Very deep. So. They're Netflix deep. <laughs> into... <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it, the, the thing about them, though, is that scientists have just discovered that these really docile animals have a decibel range of up to 236 decibels for a single click that they make. Now, just to put this into perspective, if they had to do this while divers were around, you would essentially vibrate to death, as in your organs would implode from just the sound waves. And what's interesting about this and what scientists have discovered is that they actually realize what can get hurt by these clicks. And so they they adjust the way they speak not to harm human divers and other creatures around them. Mm. And that to me is just fascinating. It just speaks to how intelligent these creatures are and how much we still don't know about the oceans. Uh, uh, my takeaway is that I just can't imagine how it feels to vibrate to death. <laughs> like um, at, at 236 decibels, that's, that's huge. It's massive. Um, don't worry, so someone somewhere is going gonna, is gonna to figure out how to turn it into a weapon. Yeah, okay. of course. <laughs> like, let's add lasers to the whale oh, yeah, instead of the shark. Dr. Evil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's super interesting. It really is. Um, and, and that goes to show you how smart these animals are. Yes. The fact that they can just realize that there are other creatures around them which can't withstand that. That can literally die. Yes. And the fact that they, they are... They're cognizant of it to the point where they adjust how they speak mm. to not kill the animals around them. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it's, it's a level of insight and intelligence that proves that this creature, you know, that there's more to this creature than we know, mm. you know? Yeah, um, but at least uh, the, the post I just opened here, it says, when research divers approach them, the whales welcome them into their pod. Which is amazing. That yes. means they they literally whisper. That they they enter into a whispering mode to you're, to you're basically, talk to basically one another. It. It's like, hello, human. <laughs> we welcome you into our pod. <laughs> I don't know why we added the Russian yeah, but... <laughs> thing, but well, I did anyway. Um, it's it's such an interesting facet of these sea creatures. Yeah. Of which I might add, we still don't know. Half as much about Listen, the sea as we know about the moon. That's precisely it. I'm telling you, Hluhlu, because that's how I say it, okay? <laughs> Cthulhu. <laughs> it's definitely out there, okay? Oh, for sure. Definitely out there. Okay, well, look, again, I, I know we've segued from tech into animals. Um, this actually is going to lead me into the next point. There's actually the most incredible nature documentary on Apple TV. Um, oh, sorry, Apple TV+. Plus. And in terms of Apple TV+, Plus, I actually just wanted to give a quick mention of how good it is. For the price? Would you say so? Uh, yes. It's only, what, like $5 a month? Which is, what, like not even 100 rand? Like 80 know. bucks? Um, I'm getting mine on the, my student oh, discount. So. Student, student life. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, which I might add, I've not been <laughs> a student for a year now. No, no. Sh- sh- nobody's listening to this podcast. <laughs> Please, nobody report Edward. <laughs> um, so I, the, what, I wanted to bring it up because there are a lot of streaming services right now, mm-hmm. right? And we know that Apple is new and... They're trying to make a name for themselves mm. from a streaming perspective. And they've received a lot of heat because mm. when the, the service launched, there were only, what, like three three shows, each with like three episodes. I think so. And yeah. like one kitty show, it was all episodes. Yes. So. And now for myself, I'm a binger. Mm. Okay. If I can't binge all episodes, I'm just not interested in watching a show until it's all available. Mm. Now, that was what? That was December, November, December last year. Uh, November, yeah. 2019. Yeah. So we're now in February 2020. Mm-hmm. So what is the service like now? Honestly, for the price, for $5 a month, and that includes, what, five other members in your family? Mm-hmm. I personally think it's worth it. I mean, I've watched a lot of the content now. I think C is a really cool sci-fi show. Um, it does sort of start very slow, but it's good. I thoroughly enjoyed the morning show, and I believe that those Golden Globes were well deserved. Um, I've enjoyed uh, Dickinson, which is a, which is like a retelling of the M- Emily Dickinson story, which I really enjoyed. That um, there's the the one about the lady who has a her <laughs> podcast, and she talks about <laughs> um, the. 
The, the truth be told. There we go. Truth be told. Yeah. Thank you. I, I couldn't remember that. That was decent. Like it wasn't amazing, but it was a. It was a. It kept you wondering what is happening next. You know, sure, it could be somewhat predictable every now and again, but overall, very decent show. Mm. And now the latest one, Mythic Quest. When there's there's more to that name than that. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Raven's <clears throat> Legacy or something. There we go. Mythic's Quest, Raven's Legacy or something, something to that effect. To that, yeah, is all about video games, and it's in the style of um, Silicon Valley, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And although Mythic's Quest is a bit slow to start, I'm willing to give it more of a chance because of the previous high quality content that Apple have been producing. Mm. And I dig the fact that this focuses on video games industry. Mm. You know, how accurate it is, is another story. And we'll have to refer to video game devs for more insight into that. Yeah, obviously we are in those... No, no, we're just the um, bitches that review the content after they've been made, yeah, okay? Yeah. For pennies on the dollar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, another big thing about Apple TV Plus is how big of a um, roster of celebrities it currently yes, hosts. Yes, that is so true. Like Steve Carroll, Aaron Paul, even Oprah has a show on, on the Oh, thing. and one of my favorite people, uh, Steven Spielberg, with his The Amazing and Stories, then, right? Yes, that's what I was Anthology getting to. series. Is, is, there is another series coming now. Um, I don't know if it's going to release all at once or whatever, but... Tim Apple, if you're listening, please, binge. Binge is the way things should be. And this whole three episodes and week by week is just not doing it for me. Yeah, it, it sucks. It <laughs> does. Especially if a show is good. Yes. Which I think Amazing Stories will be. Well, okay, look. With regards to Amazing Stories, I know I just said I like to binge the stuff. Mm-hmm. My understanding is it's anthology-based. Yes. Now, whether it will be each individual episode is a unique story like Twilight Zone. Or Mirror. Or Black Mirror. Will, or Black Mirror, yes. Or if it will be one season that is anthology-based. Mm. Is yet to be seen. Yeah. Um, either if if it's a full season anthology, please let us binge it. Mm. If it's a unique episode every time, uh, by all means, week by week, no worries. Mm. You know, or at least release three, so we have three weeks to watch one episode each week while <laughs> while it populates with new episodes <laughs> or something yeah. to that effect. <laughs> but please, um, just keep going with the good quality content and uh, less of Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop Lab, please, please. Speaking of, um, she made a candle recently that smells like her vag. Her uh, vag? Yes, her oh, vagina, okay. apparently. Um, it's sold out. Of um, course. And this is why we're leading to our next topic, which is to do with scent. Ha! <laughs> uh, <laughs> huh. What a segue! Uh, <laughs> so, McDonald's abroad, I think it's in the US, have just released a new line of really cool... Oh, okay, oh, cool, cool, cool to me because okay. Let me let me just talk about it. A line of very interestingly scented candles, whereby let's be honest, let's be honest. If you've been into a McDonald's, you know what McDonald's smells it like. It Smells lovely. It smells like McDonald's. Yeah. It's a very unique scent. Now, if you've eaten a McDonald's product, because that's what they are, it tastes uniquely and distinctly like and McDonald's. Of course. Okay. So, with that in mind, they've now released a series of candles based on the ingredients in their quarter pounder. And that is what gets me. Why the (laughs) ingredients? Well, so, I'm not too certain. My understanding is there is one that just has the quarter pounder deluxe smell. that's what I'm interested in. But no, but get this though. But just imagine that, let's say... One of your favorite things about the McDonald's burger. The pickle. Is actually, yes, the pickle. <laughs> exact, it's, it's, you, we are so in tune because that's exactly where I was going. You can now have a pickle candle. And Pickle Rick will be very happy about that. All right? Gosh. But if you like tomato sauce or ketchup, as people call it overseas, you could have that smell. But best of all, if you don't buy the one single one that smells like a burger, you can buy six and... Make your burger. So if you don't like your burger with pickles, it doesn't have to smell like it. <laughs> I've never heard of DLC for candles before. But here we are, folks. Welcome to 2020. Welcome to 2020. <laughs> Even McDonald's has DLC now. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I okay, First of all, I would buy the Gwyneth Paltrow candle. Yeah, not, I would too. Just because I'm curious to know yes. what, what, what she thinks her vagina smells exactly. like. Exactly. Okay. But the, <laughs> that aside... I would, I would also genuinely buy these McDonald's candles. Like, you, you, you know my house, Edward. Yeah. With these candles everywhere. Everywhere. And I'm always buying different flavors and, and smells. And I know, I know it's weird to say flavor, but you know that like smell is like 70%. Well, a smell is I mean, a flavor. T- sorry, taste is 70% flavor, yeah. you know? So I would 
I, I mean, not just, I mean, I haven't eaten McDonald's in years. Uh, but that's me, though. And I still love McDonald's. <laughs> I, yeah. um, so I, I would, I would genuinely get like a quarter pound of deluxe just so that I could just salivate the whole day thinking about <laughs> eating one And of maybe these give in one day. And maybe give in, yeah. <laughs> to, to the junk food we all adore. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's like, I'd probably just get the quarter pounder candle by itself. I don't get the <clears> idea <throat> of buying the ingredients. Oh, I hear what you're saying. Separately, because imagine having a room smell like ketchup. <laughs> it's it's so weird. Well, I mean, or beef patty. Well, look, let, let me put it this way: as as a South African, come on, and you were both South Africans. Mm-hmm. The like traditional sauce is tomato sauce. Yeah. Okay. It goes on everything. Mm-hmm. You know, steak, tomato sauce, potatoes, tomato sauce, vegetables, tomato sauce, that or Worcester sauce, right? <laughs> like, I even put tomato sauce on my um, my, my mac and cheese and but on my that, noodles. That makes sense. My okay. two-minute noodles. That makes sense. Okay, well, two, it makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. So, Hashtag it goes on everything. student living. Exactly. That, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag student living. It goes on everything. Um, but... But wanting to make your room smell like it is, is another story, that's, I guess. That's so, taking it too far. Look, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's to do with people who, like, order the burger but don't want the pickles. Mm-hmm. So now you just get all the separate scents and make your candle burger. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm just... I can't have ever smelt the pickle before, though. <laughs> look, either way, it's fascinating. It's I think it's strong. really cool. Um, and... I would want to buy this thing. So we'll investigate this and see if we can get And in the future. If we do, we'll try and let you know if it genuinely smells like these things or not. As a plus, they do look good. Yes. Like the, all the, the colors. Yeah. The it's it's one nice red and brightly and colored, which I really <laughs> appreciate because so many scented candles are just brown or brown or white. So yeah. Well, not Yankee candles, which oh, are cool. my favorite. <clears throat> Hashtag <Yeah>. sponsors. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, I, so I know now we're segueing um, completely again, um, but I just wanted to do, just to return back to something very cool that actually happened in to do with esports and, and online gaming, and that has to do with Rainbow Six Siege. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually just found out that there's going to be a South African operator. Now we do and- have African operators already, yep. but now we're going to get a South African one in the next update, the next season, next season, I yeah. guess, yeah. or or at least it'll be a part of the next season. Um, so basically, Tchanka, I think his name was, I uh, could be wrong. He was literally last month or the month before he released. Yes. Um, as the final operator, or well, one of the two final operators for the last season. And now in the new season, literally the second part of the new season will include a South African operator. I think that is so, super cool. That is super cool. Is there anything that you'd like to see from this character, specifically from a South African perspective? Um... Well, I probably have an EMP bomb knowing our current client. <laughs> yeah, s- speaking uh, of, um, they, we actually have load shedding right now. Yeah. Um, we're surprised we're even able to record this, but, um, <laughs> you know, yay for UPSs. Uh, yay. <laughs> Too bad the fiber's offline, though. Can't even check our show notes. <laughs> so you'd have an EMP bomb and? And a, a generator. generator. <laughs> <laughs> like, just lug one of those around. Maybe, like skilled in in espionage he should have a bottle of tomato sauce and Worcester sauce on him at all times listen <laughs> I can't believe how relatable that is <laughs> um, if it's gonna be a he um, oh that's right yeah, we, 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 we're not sure on the gender yeah. and it doesn't really matter either way um, but I, it's probably going to be like an ex-Ricky with a Worcester sauce bottle on his side, <laughs> skilled with an AK and a B-19 or something. I'm just so, curious about his accent. Because you know I want that, that in movies so and TV shows, they can, and even games, they can never do the South African accent properly. To be fair, Leonardo DiCaprio did an amazing South African accent for Blood Diamond. Okay, his, look, his was okay. It wasn't yeah. perfect. No, it wasn't But perfect. it's one of the better ones. It's, yeah. And I know that in Titanfall, they did a decent job on some of the characters, but not all of them. So, like, for some of them, you could hear, like, oh, okay, that's definitely South African. But then every now and again, you'd be like, just wait. It's a little bit off. <laughs> Titanfall, South African? Titanfall, yes. They are, Afri- they are South African characters. I think it's Titanfall 2, actually. Wow. You need to play that campaign again. Uh, that's, okay? <laughs> I, I never played it. Okay, you should. It's like, excellent. Honestly. Um, wow. I know there was a South African character in Black Ops 4, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Yes, that's um, true. Ajax, I think his name was. Yeah. Um, he had a pretty decent, at least his call-outs uh, was pretty decent. 
Well, that's awesome. I, you um, know, it's so, really nice to see more of a South African presence yes. in the international gaming scene. Even if it's just one character per game. Correct, correct. It means that we're being seen. Yeah. Because a lot of people often wonder, why don't we have local servers for this game, for that game, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. And the honest reality is that our player bases are just too small to warrant these companies spending so much money on server farms. Yeah. So essentially what I'm trying to say to our South African gamers out there, if you really want local servers, get more people to play the games you love. And that's on just it. The, 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 I think the bigger issue in that regard is the number of platforms we have available. Because if I have to think about Call of Duty specifically, um, at least for Black Ops 4, we had dedicated servers. But the issue is... of our players was on PlayStation. Another 20% was on Xbox. And everyone was so segmented. I own the game on both Xbox and PC. I could never find games on PC. Okay. This is now more an issue of cross-play support. Yes. And this issue is quite a long-standing one. And I think we'll... Let's get to it in a, a future episode because that's a, that's a whole talk. That's, for, like, that's a long talk. Yeah. But what I'd like to just say with regards to this and online servers in South Africa is your support goes a long way. And I don't mean us now in a podcast. I mean, if there's an esports event that is happening locally and it's around one of the games you follow that you enjoy and that you would actually like to have local servers for, go and support them. The more support the, these games get in our country, the more likely we are to have official support from abroad. And that includes local servers. Mm-hmm. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We've reached the end of episode two of Gettle. <laughs> it was um, quite a packed episode. I know we sort of went a little bit all over the show mm. this time around. Um, and one of the bigger reasons for that is because I felt that I did need to talk about um, what happened to myself and my family. So mm-hmm. um, that sort of, you know, it, it changed what our original um, talk of this episode was going to be about. Um, we, yeah. we, we still hope that you enjoyed either way. Um, and if you did, please <clears throat> like and subscribe. Oh, that's not YouTube, right? No. <laughs> well, um, you do subscribe to podcasts. Okay, yeah. So, so. so please do subscribe. And as always, as we've mentioned before, please like reach out to us on Twitter. Yeah. By all means, at Hans Haupt at Infinis mm-hmm. or at Gettle Podcast and Gettle as in G-E-T-L. Mm-hmm. Um, we're available on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, wherever you want to be. And don't forget, you can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and gettle.simplecast.com. Yeah. Um, and if you really like this episode, I have to mention, <laughs> just give us a quick review on Apple or Spotify. Oh, yeah. It, it that, always that goes be, a, far, a long awesome, way. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, we won't always ask for this. Yeah, we are in the beginning stages of this thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and we're loving it. And this is actually, and I, I will admit this, this is the first time this week since everything has happened that I have felt a little bit normal. Mm. And um, the counselor did mention it is best to not let fear rule my life and to do things that I would always want to do and i'm glad that i really have this outlet and especially you edward for being here with me um and to those of you who listen thank you very much yeah we always appreciate the online love <laughs> and it's 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 nice to 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 why is somebody cutting onions support. in here edward <laughs> i don't know <laughs> okay also I'm, I'm crying, <laughs> I'm crying. Um, okay. thank you very much and uh we'll see you all next time cheerio bye bye guys